Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we discuss how you can create an effective cross-selling strategy for your online store. Joining me on the show is Varun Kundra, co-founder of aftersell.com. So let's dive right into it. Hello, welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today, we want to talk about ways on how to increase your average order value, your AOV. Now, one of a very effective strategy to do that is to use cross-selling. And we want to dive deeper into that, what kind of strategies you can follow and what kind of features you need to have to get most out of it. For that, joining me on the show today is Varun Kandra. He's the co-founder of Aftersell, a Shopify app used by over 20,000 brands to boost average order value with an upselling and cross-selling. Aftersell was acquired by Rockta.com this year. And we want to dive a little bit into this and I'd like to welcome Varun. Hi, Varun. How are you today? Hey, Klaus. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Let's dive into it. So cross-selling, upsell, cross-sell, all of that. Tell me what's the psychology behind that? What is the thought process behind this whole thing yeah absolutely uh so the context is that today customer acquisition costs are at an all-time high and they're ever increasing and in that environment it's really important to uh, maximize your aov right you want to make the most out of each shopper and one of the most compelling ways to do that is through upsells and cross sells and you know that's kind of the thesis behind our whole business we started the business about four years ago and we started with doing it post-purchase. Um, so that means right after you check out, we create this full landing page with another offer. Um, and then we also continue to grow that to check out as well as to cart. And so yeah, now we have a basically a full upselling platform that's become the go-to platform with Shopify. Why is it that customers often say yes to additional products? I mean, they want to buy one thing in the first place and then there is something that makes them buy more. How does that work? Yeah, great question. Um, I think the, the upsells that work the best are from people who really understand the consumer psychology. So it's all about positioning and framing, right? Like if you're going through a purchase and then you see right after, you know, right after you have that euphoria moment of completing the transaction, you see a personalized relevant offer with perhaps a discount um, or like a full landing page that explains like why it's compelling. That will work a lot better than just, you know, some random offer that doesn't really look nice or like have much accompanying copy or things like that. Um, it's all about relevance and understanding like why someone would purchase as you're saying. Um, and the answer depends per store, depends per you know customer persona. All these things are are important to maximize the the effect of cross selling and upselling. You mentioned personalization. How important is that? How important is that you get something for I don't know your user behavior or how do you find out? Yeah, off with the so right it product. is important. We try to enable it as much as possible. Uh, like even even something as simple as having like the person's name on the upsell offer makes a difference. Uh, that's what we allow a lot of merchants to do is like you know just saying like, hey, Klaus, like you've unlocked X Y Z offer. That's more effective than just saying you've unlocked X Y Z offer. Um, something as small as that makes a difference. And you know, a deeper level, we have uh, we have a system where people can create different funnels. Uh, so different. Uh, customer journeys can be targeted with different types of offers. And the more you're able to tap into that, the more you're able to, you know, understand those customer journeys and show different offers that are relevant for those types of customer journeys, the more effective you'll be. I want to learn a little bit more about these different funnels. Now, obviously, these funnels might have different entry points. Uh, we're talking here about in-cart, about checkout, post-purchase, upsells, confirmation pages. There's different ways to do that. Talk me through the different ways on how to get someone to buy more. So yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. Um, so it starts with with the cart. Uh, so we have a full slider cart product where we allow merchants to create a cart that feels on brand um, and then also has these ways to boost AOVs. Uh, there's direct like upsells and cross sells. Um, so at the bottom, it's like, you know, it kind of shows a carousel where there's a bunch of additional items that you can add to cart. Uh, we also have this concept of add-ons. Um, where it's a bit different, but it's also an upsell, but it's a bit different in the way it's implemented. Um, it's it's more used for things like uh, shipping protection or extended warranty or these kinds of like things where it's not a direct new product. It's kind of like you know enhancing what you or what you're already purchasing in some way. Then in checkout, uh, we ha we have offers that are like almost part of the checkout, so it feels native. You know, it feels like it's just right there at the right moment. Um, 
And then lastly, post-purchase, like I mentioned, we have a full page uh, where we can kind of create a landing page. And I think that's actually the most effective for generating uh, additional revenue mm -hmm. just because it's right after the transaction. So, you know, whenever you buy something, there is a little bit of dopamine that happens and that, that kind of primes the, the shopper to see this offer, see this offer and be receptive to it. Um, and then also it's like a full page. So there's really nothing else to be distracted by or think about. Okay. This dopamine kick makes me almost feeling bad as a marketeer, but it definitely works. Now, if I don't have a product to upsell, I understand you came up with something that I have never heard of before. Um, mm -hmm. So basically you can have products from someone else in there. What is that about? Yeah, great question. Yeah, so um, as you mentioned earlier on, uh, we're now part of a larger company called Rocked. And Rocked is really an enterprise company. Um, what they do is they they show third-party offers on sites like Best Buy, Ticketmaster. So you'll be browsing on these sites, you'll check out. And then when you complete your purchase, they'll show you an offer from another blue chip company. Like they'll show an offer from HelloFresh or Audible or Disney+. Plus. Um, and this is pretty interesting because what's happening here is we're kind of, we're, we're allowing uh, these sites to become basically retail media networks like you know, on Best Buy, on Ticketmaster. Now they're leveraging that really valuable real estate they have for other companies. Um, so now it's almost like an, it's, it's basically an advertising model where Disney Plus, Audible, all these companies will pay per click um, for the shoppers on Ticketmaster, on Best Buy. Um, and, you know, this is, like I said, very interesting and it's very valuable for these enterprise brands. Uh, but we noticed it wasn't a thing on Shopify. So we kind of wanted to steal this idea that works so well in the enterprise and bring it to this ecosystem of emerging brands. Um, and that's kind of how the whole acquisition came about. That's what we're focused on um, you know, in the next year, and next, next couple of years. How do I find this third party brand that has something that works with my product as a cross sell, as an upsell? How does it work? Yeah, great question. So that's really Rock's job. Um, the job of, of our product is to make sure that the offers are personalized and are relevant. Uh, there's hundreds of advertisers. So there's enough breadth out there that, you know, there will be something that is relevant for um, for your store and for your shoppers. And that's also just like really much, really very much in like the long-term incentive of our company, right? Like if we can't show personalized relevant offers, those offers won't convert. And if they won't convert, then you won't be happy as the merchant and the advertisers won't be happy either. Now we are on a podcast, Wendy Audio, for, we, we cannot really show the app in, in real life. Um, talk me through the, the way on how you implement that and how do you control it? There might be advertisers um, having products that you don't want to have or the other ways right. you want to be picky. Absolutely. How does it work? Yeah. Um, so the actual implementation uh, for Shopify brands is within Aftersell now. So you, know, you just install the Aftersell app and there's a page for network offers and you can basically set it up there. Um, and yeah, you can block uh, certain domains. So for example, if you don't want, um, I don't know, some XYZ advertiser, you can block that advertiser's domain. And you can also block verticals and sub-verticals. So if you don't want a category of advertising, you can block that entire category. And yeah, you can also make sure that the offers look like they're part of your store. Um, so we allow merchants to kind of change the UI, the colors, all these kinds of things to make it feel like it's part of the brand. Um, and that's another just important part for conversion as well. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to increasing average order value, where do I earn as a merchant on this kind of partnership? Yeah, so the way it works is that um, the advertisers pay per click and then uh, half of the revenue that's earned from that is shared with the merchant. Uh, so it's a 50-50 okay. rev share model. Um, and you know, for the merchant, it's pure profit, right? Like there's no associated costs with, with doing that. And for us, um, there's, there's lots of costs, obviously, but uh, in a way, it's really like the merchant gets 90% of the profit and 10% of the profit goes to our company. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example, and you don't need to name the brand, um, on what kind of results a, um, a merchant saw by implementing this kind of solution? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm happy to talk about some of the brands that, that we work with. Um, we work with lots of top brands on Shopify. Uh, True Classic, Jonesford Beauty. Um, recently, we started working with Skims. And I, I won't go into their specifics like you mentioned, but basically, it's based on you know every based on how many transactions they have. Um, so 
Um, one of the largest brands we work with has like hundreds of thousands of transactions a month. And so, you know, they're able to generate 30 cents for every single transaction. So that, that can be like 30,000 a month in pure profit just from this concept. Okay, you know, that sounds very interesting. How does the implementation work? Do I need to do some homework or what's kind of the setup structure to get it up and running? Yeah, we've made it as simple as possible. Um, so yeah, it's, it's within AfterSell. You install AfterSell. There's a page dedicated just for this this this, this whole concept of network offers. Um, within 10 minutes, you can enable it. Basically that page, what it allows you to do is, like I mentioned, kind of change the UI, change the colors, make sure that the offers look like they're part of your brand. Um, and then you can also, you know, edit the verticals that you want to show or, or block. Um, super simple. Mm -hmm. Can I do this on a product level or collection level, or is it just a general implementation? How far goes the, the tuning there? Yeah, so for network offer specifically, the idea is that it shows on the order confirmation page. It's mm -hmm. not based on like what's being purchased. Um, the offers mm -hmm. that show may you know be personalized based on what's purchased, but you know like it'll it'll be showing regardless of what's bought. Um, it's it's not funnel specific. Um, now what you can do is like, you can sh you can edit the visibility of the offer. So for example, let's say you just want to do a test and you want to show it for half of your customers or twenty five percent of your customers. You can edit that visibility within the app so that. You know, for now you're testing, you don't want to show it to everyone, you can do that. Um, but there's no like setup that, you know, you'll show XYZ offers for specific products. It's it's really like our job to, you know, personalize the offers and make it relevant. Mm -hmm. Now I see there an opportunity to have it the other way around. If I, with my brand, want to be on the confirmation pages of other brands, and yeah. you said Rockta is, is dealing with that, is that possible? And how does it work? Absolutely. Um, it is possible. It's something that we're actively exploring. Um, right now, advertising on Rockt has been mostly, like I said, in the enterprise and with these larger brands. Um, but we are starting to work with, um, you know, these emerging brands as an advertiser. Um, it's it's kind of more of a trial period for us. But uh, yeah, absolutely something that's possible. Um, it, again, it just really depends on, you know, the brand awareness and how, what specific offer they're trying to do, what, what success looks like for them. Mm -hmm. Who's your perfect customer? Are there specific industries or niche that um, are really working well with that? Yeah. So I would say there's no specific uh, vertical or niche that works uh, really, really well. Like, honestly, our product has mass appeal. Um, like, as long as you have more than one product that you want to upsell, um, it's it's usually pretty effective. Um, even if you have one product, you know, some some people just upsell the same product. You could do that, and they have like a discount, or they they upsell like a you know a larger quantity of their product. Um, so really, like yeah, basically, any store almost can use after sell. Um, yeah, and we we have stores like in in basically all the countries that Shopify operates on. Okay, cool. That sounds good. Tell me a little bit about the pricing structure. We price uh, based on order volume and based on what parts of our product are being used. Um, so. Like I mentioned, we have three components. Um, we have checkout, we have uh, the cart, and we have post-purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our pricing is based on how many orders a month the shoppers have. So um, it goes from 35 to 800 now for post-purchase. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's about 35 to 200 for a, a cart. Um, checkout is a flat $99 a month. Um, so yeah, it's based, based on which modules are being used. Um, and then the network offers that I talked about, that one, there's no pricing because we actually pay you as a merchant. Um, it's a way to generate revenue. So, Okay. You mentioned before that you can adjust um, the look and feel to your brand. Is this a no-code solution or do I need help from a developer or from your side? Yeah. Yeah. So throughout the app and all the different modules and ways that we help merchants generate revenue, we've, we've you know, tried to maximize how much merchants can personalize their offers and change the look and feel in a no-code way. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, whatever is basically possible within the Shopify's APIs, we've we've tried to do. Okay, cool. For me, it sounds like a great solution to to bring just other brands into your brand, other third-party products into your brand. And then basically, as you said, make a ton of money without any further work from your side. 
before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners? Um, no, honestly, it, uh, you know, happy to be part of the podcast. Um, if anyone is, you know, has any questions, feel free to message me. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. I will put the links in the show notes. So then you will be just one click away. I hope a lot of people will come over to you and check it out again after Cell and also Rockta are two companies that are around for a very long time. So they're not new players in the market. And I think the concept that you came up with is, is, is brilliant. Um, just gives you a way to make more money with not additional ad putting additional work on your plate. So definitely something that merchants should try out. Varun, thanks so much for your time today and hope to talk soon. Thanks, Klaus.